am I making the mistake of idealizing Indo-Caribbean culture or culture in general and making it into dance and food and outfits versus seeing the darker side of it that maybe is not worth passing on? There is a lot of, of dark parts of it. I think, I believe in Guyana, it's the highest suicide rate in the world for the Indo-Caribbean community. Um, so there's clearly something happening that I feel is solvable if we were not so afraid. This is all generational trauma. Teaching people the culture, maintaining the culture. I didn't, I didn't put two and two together until she had passed. And I, now it's like that responsibility of like, is this something I can do or is there a different way for me to do this? This video is sponsored by Squarespace, an amazing one-stop shop for entrepreneurs and creatives to get out what's in their brain out into the world in a beautiful, customizable, optimized, diverse way. So whether you need a website, you yeah. have a mailing list, you have an online store, yeah. you have a members only community, Squarespace is an amazing tool that we have been using for the past five years of our business. Yeah. We actually have to buy a domain through them for shared entertainment, so we change our emails, remind me. Okay. And if you are in the same boat and you're buying a domain or a website right now, you can get 10% off your purchase with Squarespace when you go to squarespace.com slash shanbooty. You can also get two weeks free, no credit cards required to play around, see if you like it. And if you like what you've made, go to squarespace.com slash shambooty, get the 10% off. Yeah, go get it. Hi there, lovers and friends. I have been in Toronto for 40 days and 40 nights. Right now, I'm in New York City. I'm here for one day and one night taping Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. But for the past 40 days, I have been in Toronto. And if you've ever been to Toronto before, you know the one thing it is going to gift you with is culture, diverse, glorious, beautiful culture. And specifically for me, it's the first time in a long time that I have been enriched in my own culture as a Caribbean person, as an Indo-Caribbean person, reconnecting with family and friends, reconnecting with people in a very intimate way, especially because we're coming out of the pandemic, but moreover, because this is the first time my kids have gotten to really spend time in Canada and spend time around their family. And it's had me very reflective on the role that I play as a mother to pass on culture to my children, to let them know where they come from, the deep history and the lives that have led to the decisions that led to their life being made. And also the practices and the teachings that could actually enrich their life. But as an ambiguous person who doesn't neatly fit inside of any culture, this has always been a tricky place for me of finding out where I fit in and where I can find my place and find my footing without offending, without clashing. Um, so I wanted to invite you all in on this conversation that I got to have with Pramika Leo, somebody whom was a cultural hub for me, somebody whom in many ways I grew up with um, and whose mother was deeply, deeply influential on me and her mom passed of COVID during the pandemic. So it was a beautiful opportunity for me to connect with her and to look for ways to invite myself into the communities that I love very deeply. And yeah, that's what you can expect going forward. Is this weird to say? It's a very hard topic to talk about guys. So let's get into it. Hey, my name is Premika Leo. I'm the current owner and director of Gisika Dance Company. You might have known it as Tarana Dance School if you were dancing back in the 90s and the 80s, but this is my mom, one of the co-founders of this company. And it's actually named after her and me, her daughter. And if you didn't know, Shannon used to be a former student here at Gisika Dance Company along with her mom and her sister, and a couple cousins actually. So come on, let's Let's get to know each other a little bit better. Let's talk about some history and some Indo-Caribbean culture today. You were the first person to give me a photo shoot. I wore that purple dress. My mom was there. Your mom was there. They were off gaffing in a corner. And I went off working in entertainment, like Western forms of entertainment ever since. You know what's so interesting about that is you're younger than me and you're, you are little. But I've never looked at you as little. Really? Because you were my teacher. This is true. So yeah. you have always been somebody who I looked at like, you know, I've always just looked at you in such awe and reverence and grace. And you seem like you have an old soul. But <laughs> it, it never felt like, because I know you and your mom, well, your mom owned the school and she was the head of it. But I always just saw the two of you as yin and yang, as you work together so collaboratively and mm -hmm. beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to back you into why I'm here today. 
I am Indo-Caribbean, but not visibly so. Mm -hmm. So I don't read as somebody who is Indian or who has that heritage, but I've never had to be manual about my culture because it just existed around me. Mm -hmm. So whether or not I visually look at it or not, I'm at the events, I, it's my dad's heritage, it's my family's heritage, it's what we eat, mm -hmm. it's what we dress, it's how we dance, mm -hmm. it's how we move, it's how we communicate, so. Even the volunteer work you did here was all Indo-Caribbean based. You would go to like the different mandirs and you would do these jihaji performances with my mom, the plays and yes. all Yes, and that was since I was a child, yes. right? Since you grew up with the, yes. this. And so, as I've had my own daughters now, and we're in Los Angeles, which is, Diverse, but in a very distinct way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Not the way that Toronto is, where it's a mosaic everywhere that you go. Mm -hmm. But coming back here, I just realized how out of touch Ryu is with culture. And mm -hmm. because she doesn't visually assimilate to any culture, mm -hmm. and because I'm not living the, in the culture, mm -hmm. she's not really getting it. Yeah, so I was like, well, I how do that. I bring the gifts that my culture brought to me to my children? And as a mom, is that actually my role? You are back. <laughs> We were just talking about you. Where'd you find this? I find this. It's and then thinking about this twofold in the role of a mom to pass down culture to her daughters and mm -hmm. reflecting on how mm -hmm. your mom gave you that gift so effortlessly that it oozed out of you, that wisdom, that grace. It seemed as if you had lived many lifetimes and you were probably only, what, 12 years old? But I think that's because of the way that your mom empowered you. Mm -hmm. And this obviously has more weight to it because your mom passed. Yes, yeah, when she passed, it really changed my life in the sense of like, all this responsibility that she was holding back from me, I guess, was suddenly dropped on me. I didn't realize how many people were coming to her for advice. Because I remember, you know, your mom and my mom would sit up in the living room and they would just talk and talk. And I didn't realize that was part of the job, but, when she passed, I was like, okay, well, I gotta figure out what I, I, I do with this information. And do people want it? Do people not want it? Um, you're actually kind of the first person to say, I want my daughters to know since her passing. Teaching people the culture, maintaining the culture. I didn't, I didn't put two and two together until she had passed. And I, now it's like that responsibility of like, is this something I can do or is there a different way for me to do this? You talked about legacy and the complicated relationship that you have with that. You are in such a unique position that I don't think a lot of people in our generation are. I mean, generations back, your parents passed and you take up their work. That's yes. just what you do. Yeah. Your parents owned a steel mill, now you own the steel now mill. You own, yeah. And that is somewhat, I think, the responsibility that was left on you, and I'd love to hear about it. That was one of the most traumatic things that happened to me, actually, because People started reaching out looking for her and me and I was trying to tell them, no, I'm someone very different. And so I was trying to, my best to kind of bring that into the light, but I guess people come with their own assumptions of who you are and they stand by that pretty concrete and you can't convince them otherwise that you have use outside of that. Um, so that's what made the legacy for me quite complicated, all the pain that came with it and inheriting her pain and seeing now I really see where, where her comments, the things that she would tell me, I see where it's coming from because now it's on me. But so do you think that culture is crippling? I think there's space for evolution. I think there is space for protection. Um, protection of, of the things we love, like dance, the actual history, the oral histories. Um, you know, when she was teaching you guys Odyssey, all these things are important, but I think there's things within our culture, wherever you are in the Caribbean culture, that do need adjustment. Hi. <laughs> can you take me to the potty, please? Oh yes, you wanna go to the potty? Can you take me to the potty? Let's go to the potty. Mm -hmm. We gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Now we have been partnering with Squarespace for a couple of years, using yeah. them for double that time. Now they have got some new features yep. that I wanna tell you about, Jared. Tell me. The Fluid Engine. The Fluid Engine is a next generation website design system from Squarespace. It has never been easier for anyone to unlock unbreakable creativity, drag and drop customizable fluid design. Oh, Let's I like that. go. Flexible website templates, we know about that. Custom merch, so it's a place that people have gone to sell their stuff forever. Now, you can get custom merch there. 
Good to know. Good to know. Easily sell your custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand. Design your products and production, inventory, shipping, all handled for you, saving you time, money, and effort. You can also do appointments now, which I actually had a system. This is all, I'm reading this for the first time. <laughs> I need this. Um, I didn't know about these features. So they now have appointments. So accept appointments on your Squarespace website. I have a third party system that I pay to use. Canceling now that subscription right after we do this. Go to Squarespace and do that there. They offer online or in-person private sessions that people can schedule right there with you. Workshops, group classes, so much more. I got to read the rest of this. So yeah, y'all go to Squarespace too to find out how they can change your life. They just changed mine in this ad read. Yeah, Squarespace is the next thing or it's the thing. The thing. Yeah. It's our thing. Yes. It could be their thing too. All they got to do is go to squarespace.com slash shambooty, get 10% off the purchase of hey. a website or domain. Say one more time, babe. Go to squarespace.com slash shambooty to get 10% off of a website or a domain. And as you're talking about sort of the burden of responsibility to represent not just yourself, not just your family, but an entire culture <laughs> when you're tied to it so heavily. Yeah. I felt that. And there are beautiful parts of my Caribbean this period because my mom is Dominican Caribbean. So that's just a part of my mm -hmm. identity that feels unquestionable. As somebody who is ambiguous looking and everything is in question, the one thing I could say without a shadow of a doubt is I'm West Indian. Mm -hmm. And so that has held a lot of pride for me, but there is also some bondage that comes with that, mm -hmm. that I had to separate myself, especially as somebody who talks about sex out loud. I had to <laughs> yeah. make a lot of aggressive oh severances from my culture in order to give myself the permission to live the life that I wanted to live. When I was starting to kind of live between Guyana and Canada a bit more, I learned a lot more about those behaviors and how I really failed it. I wasn't good at being a, the good Indo-Caribbean person or there was something in my genetics that was different about me and it could, you know, it's my dad apparently. But um, I felt really, I, I felt like a failure. I felt like I was just failing people because I wanted to talk about our community. I wanted to go on TikTok and make TikTok and I had to, I had to take all of it down because I was exposing everybody and I didn't mean to. I thought it was coming from a place of love and I was hurting people. I guess that's an interesting thing that we've been talking to you about the difference too between being visibly identifiably part of a culture where everything that you do, whether you say where you're from or not, you're representing the culture at all times. Yes, and it's really scary. Doing this Mommy. is scary because I don't wanna. Hi. Mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm the I think there's this idea that Indo-Caribbean dances or something that's based in the Indo-Caribbean community is not accessible and it shouldn't be accessible to other people, but I heavily disagree because that is still the fabric of what Caribbean community is, right? You're wearing madras uh, textiles on your head that comes from India, right? I don't want people to feel hesitant or separated or that they're not allowed, um, maybe because we have been so secretive. Yeah, I mean, your parents didn't keep you away from West Indian culture at all. They didn't keep you away from the Indo-Caribbean culture. You're, I mean, your, your dad is Guyanese, right? But we had you dress up, you know, we gave you guys the costumes. We talked about the history a lot. And I think that's how it should be. Yeah, I, I don't feel, I don't believe in the gatekeep girl boss mentality, right? Or that it belongs to one person. I really would like my, to try my best to keep it open. That's a personal statement, though because I know it's not the same for everyone. What are you so glad that your mom gave you? Discipline. Because she wasn't easy on me. I was talking to my brother and we were talking about, you know, the way she talked to students or even cousins, very different to how she spoke to me. And I think, I mean, we, we talked a little bit about that because we would just kind of bounce off of each other. We had a very interesting relationship, but she had me training from sun up to sundown, like, School wasn't really my thing because I was always training. I was always here. You could always find me in the studio. If you, I wasn't here, I was training somewhere, somewhere else. I was at other dance studios and I was just go, 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 go. We still have a lot of these costumes. People stole some of these costumes. So a lot of these, give them back. <laughs> if you have them, give them back. <laughs> I would like them back. Um, but the idea that this one woman every year since the 80s was hand sewing all these costumes just so 
someone's child can have five minutes of their own culture in their own world, I think is phenomenal. And I think that's something she taught me she, where she was like, it's, this is it. It's everything. It is, you're waking up in the morning, you're thinking about this, you're trying to do your best. And it does come with very abusive parts. It comes with people not understanding you. It comes with people who are purposely trying to misunderstand you or twist your narrative but you need to stand by who you are. And it takes discipline. Not everybody is meant to do this, but you're going to do this. Look it, look it. Let you me brought see. it for me. Oh my goodness. I want to ask you about, I think for a very long time in our life, our biggest nightmare is that our mom will die. And when it happens, are you ever really prepared? The way that my mom passed, which I told you, I wasn't prepared for, and I still struggle with it every day. I never thought of her passing though, because she, when, if you knew my mom, if anybody knew, she felt like this eternal fixture culturally, you know, spiritually, she just felt like she was always going to be there. And I never thought about it. I really didn't. It's hard to lose your soulmate. And I didn't think she was going to have such a, unsatisfactory way of passing it was so upsetting it was so disappointing and it was so I feel like even my students like they were just this is not how she was supposed to go this is not you know she's a regal woman this is not how she's supposed to pass and and it's interesting because I'm thinking about your mom and just wanting to say thank you for the gift of your mom mm -hmm. and thank you for the gifts that she gave to you that you have given to me mm -hmm. um, because you were just as much my teacher, just as much my mentor and idol as your mom was. And when I think about your mom, I think about her feet in her hands. I think as a dancer, this is a natural thing mm -hmm. to go to. It's something that you hyper focus on when you're a student. Yes. You know, what is someone's feet and hands doing? So I spent a lot of time watching her in that way. And as much as I always saw her in trad traditional dress and her love, for dance came from a traditional place. Your mom was not a traditional woman. Like her no. sense of humor. No, she, she was, was not. That was the thing because I was thinking, um, you know, you were talking about sexuality. And I think that's the side of her that I represent, the shadow self of her, where it's like, we are gonna talk about sex because you can't sit all these children down and then give them a dance about, you know, Krishna trying to like seduce this woman and not talk about sex, right? It's important, and I like that part of it. I really like it. It makes me feel embodied. It makes me feel present. And that's why we connect. I think so. I think, <laughs> really, yeah. I think so. <laughs>